The Griffith gnat is best known for imitating midges or midge clusters as they float along the water surface. Because it's so effective and even works during the winter, it's just one of those dry flies that you gotta have in your box. To tie this fly, you'll need a standard dry fly hook. Today I'm tying this in size 16. Some 70 or 72 denier thread in black, peacock hurl, and some grizzly dry fly hackle. All right, gather up your materials. Let's get tying. So first things first, let's get our hook secure in the vise. Now grab your thread and we're going to attach it to the hook using a jam knot. This is done by taking a few wraps forward and then wrapping the thread back over itself a few more times. Now that it's not going anywhere, let's snip off that tag end with our good tying scissors. Now we're going to lay down a solid even thread base and we'll wrap our thread all the way back to about even with the barb or right where the hook starts to bend. A helpful little tip here, you want to keep a little bit of space in between the front of your thread base and the eyelet. We'll be using that space later on in our tying process. Now we're going to grab some peacock hurl. Select the longest and fluffiest feather you can find. A little bit about peacock hurl, one side is brittle and the other side is pretty strong. It's easy to tell by the color. The brittle side is that classic peacock green and the tough side is white. We're gonna take that brittle side and tie it into our fly. With that peacock curl tied in, we can just grab the brittle end and pop it off with our fingers. Now let's talk dry fly hackle. So here I've got a beautiful, high quality grizzly whiting saddle. I'm going to pluck off a feather and using a hackle gauge, check its size. We wanna match it up with the appropriate hook size. So for this Griffith snap, I'm using a size 16 hook. So we're looking for a hackle in the 16 to 14 range. For this fly, I like the hackle fibers to be about even or slightly longer than the hook point. This is gonna help it ride a little higher on the water and be easier to see while you're fishing. If you don't have a hackle gauge, you can do the same thing with the hook shank. Again, trying to get the hackle fibers to be about even or slightly longer than the hook point. Now we're going to prep the feather. With the feather dull side down, we're going to pull back a few of the hackle fibers. On one side, we'll trim more than the other side. This is going to help the hackle lay correctly when we start to wrap. With the short side down, we're going to tie in our hackle back to the end of our thread base. Because the peacock hurl is quite fragile, I prefer wrapping it by hand instead of rotary. We'll save that for the hackle. So we're going to wrap the hurl all the way up to the front of our thread base trying to get each wrap as close to each other as possible. Now we're gonna hold the hurl in our right hand and bring the thread up and over a few times, locking it all into place. Now snip off the hurl. And like I said, we're going to use the rotary function on our vise for the hackle. So grab your half hitch tool and lock the thread into place by wrapping the thread around the tool, placing it over the eyelet, sliding the thread down and locking it all into place. Then we can swing our bobbin cradle around and hang up our bobbin. Now holding onto the hackle, we're going to rotate the vise using our rotary function. 
If you don't have a rotary vise, you can do this by hand just like we did the peacock hurl. We're going to wrap up the hook right up to where we ended the peacock hurl. Same thing, hold the hackle in your right hand, take the thread up and over a few times, locking it all into place. Then snip off the excess hackle. Now, I like to take our thread and make a little head on our fly for two purposes. One, it's gonna make a nice spot for our whip finish to happen. And two, it's going to keep our hook eyelet clear of any stray hackle fibers. This is gonna make it easier to tie that fly on when you're out on the river. So let's brush back all the fibers with our fingers and make some nice flat wraps. Now that we have a clean thread base, we can whip finish. With the thread locked into place, we can snip it off. And there you have it. If you enjoyed this video and found it easy to follow, be sure to check out all of our tying tutorials here. And if you want some help getting that grivis snat in front of a fish, we release tons of tips, tricks, and tutorials every week to help you do that. Definitely subscribe. Thanks for watching and live real life.